my name is Thomas Foster and this is the first episode of a multi-part tutorial on Bitwig Studio 3. This tutorial is right for you if you are a beginner or if you come from another software and you want a quick start in Bitwig Studio 3. If you open Bitwig the first time it should look like this and here we select new project to open an empty song. Here on the bottom you find three words, arrange, mix and edit. At the moment we see the arrange page, so we see our tracks. Here we have one instrument, that's a MIDI track or an audio track where you can record vocals or guitars or whatever. If we change to mix, we see a mixer, we see the mixer page. Here again we have the first track, the instrument and the second track, the audio track. And if we change to edit, we can edit the notes that we played on the piano or we can insert notes with the mouse. Let's go back to arrange and here we have the most important thing and that's the play button. So let's click on the play button. Immediately you see the cursor is running from left to right. You see the seconds here and the bars and beats. If you want to hear that, you should click on the metronome. Let's do this. All right. So we hear one, two, three, four. The first click, the high click, is the beginning of the bar. And because it's a four to four bar, uh, we hear three more clicks. All right. We stop that again. If you don't hear the metronome, you maybe did not choose your audio card. So to do this, you click this button here to come to the settings, click on settings and audio. And here you can choose uh, your audio card. In my case, it's the Universal Audio Apollo. You should choose your audio card for input device and output device. All right. How fast we hear this metronome? We tell the system with the BPM here. At the moment it's 110 BPM. I would say that's a medium pop track. So for example if we go to 90 BPM you can do this by clicking and while you hold down the mouse you move it down to 90. Let's listen to 90 BPM. That's a, a ballad for example or a sl slow pop song or whatever. Um, if you want a more dance track, house track or whatever, you go to 123 beats. Dubstep would be like 140 or faster. Drum and bass 160 and 180 if you would like to make goa music. But uh, let's go to 123. We want to make a dance track right now. Okay. You can now Click play and stop, but there's an easier way. You can use the space key of your keyboard. So the first time you click, it's play. The second time you click, it's stop. Play and stop. Most time in the music, you work on one bar or four bars. And because we don't, do not want always to click stop and play and stop and play, so we want to loop for example, one bar. To activate the loop, you click here this loop symbol. How long the loop is, you see here with the white square. So let's take a look to this. At the moment we have two bars in a loop and at the end it's jumping to the beginning. Again, all right. But you can change this by clicking here in the right corner where you get this special mouse symbol. And now you can move it to bar 2. Let's do this because we want to work on one bar. You always also can change it here the, with the length. Uh, maybe you have to zoom in or zoom out to do this. You can zoom in or zoom out by clicking here in this gray area and holding down the mouse, moving up to zoom out or down to zoom in. So we want to see now one bar, like this, that's perfect. And now we make a double click here in the first square, in the beginning of our first bar, to create an empty clip. If we make a double click on this empty click, 
uh, clip. <laughs> uh, then we see here our editor. But before we can uh, put in notes, uh, we have to load some sounds. So let's double click the track again, where it says instrument one. And now let's click this plus symbol here to load something on our MIDI track. We can load devices. A device is a synthesizer or a sampler. Or we can load presets. Then you search for a preset and you load the synthesizer, including this preset, means this sound. To find a drum sound, we click here on drum machine. And now we just see the drum machine presets. Um, why don't we load the house kit one with uh, clicking on house kit one and then we say OK. And now if you have a keyboard connected to your computer, you should be able now to listen to the sounds here by playing the notes C1 and C sharp. Yeah. Then you can listen to the sounds. If you don't have a keyboard, it's not a problem. We double click now our clip and now we see the drum editor. We also can zoom in and zoom out here. Uh, I want to see exactly this one bar here. That's perfect. And I don't know how many squares you see here from left to right. In my case, it's 16, but maybe you see something like 64 or 32. You can change this. Uh, in music, if you want to make a beat, 16th is very good. So, because this is one bar and you see 16 squares, that means uh, you see the 16th of a bar. So, if you click here on this number, in my case it says 116, um, you can click now on 116 here to change it by holding down the mouse and moving it up and down. So, let's go to 116, that's fine. We can listen to the sounds by clicking this icons here. Let's find a bass drum here. The lowest one is the bass drum. We want to make a fall to the floor beat. That means we need a bass drum at every beat. The beats are here. One, two, three and four. So we double click the first square. We double click uh, the one uh, right from 1.2. That's here. And three empty. Again, here and here. Okay, let's listen to what we did. We don't need the metronome anymore, so let's click on the metronome to deactivate it. That's the bass drum for a 4 to the floor beat. Let's add a snare. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, we add the snare on the 1, 2 and the 1, 3 on top of every second bass drum. Wonderful. Let's add a clap. Here we have a clap and we do the clap at the same position like the snare. At the clap sometimes it's useful to move it a little bit to the left because the main accent of a clap normally is not in the beginning, it's a little bit later. So uh, to do this we activate both. So I click here and now I make a square that I move on top of these two claps to activate both claps. And now I can move both claps, but you feel that it's a little bit magnetic exactly here at the beat. So to move it more in detail, you click the shift key and now you can make very small movements and we move it a little bit to the left. Maybe you have to zoom in to move it just a little bit to the left. All right, let's listen. I like it. And let's add a hi-hat. Maybe this one here. We add the hi-hat at the off beats. So we go to one, two, three. Here we make a double click. And again, uh, here's the second kick. One, two, three. One, two, three. And one, two, three. Let's listen to this. Wonderful, that's a good beat. And why don't we add something to make it more interesting, a little ghost beat. Uh, we can do this with the snare, for example here at the last 16th. Let's listen to this. 
I like it, but it's a little bit too loud. The great thing in, in Bitwig is you can change the gain of one beat. That's very special. I don't know this from another DAW. But uh, you also can change the velocity. Um, and you can see the velocity. What is the velocity? That's how fast you click on your key on your keyboard, right? And to see this, we click this uh, symbol here. And now you see the velocity of every note. And because the last snare is selected, we can change it here or we can change it here. Let's li listen to it with less velocity. That's much better. Maybe we want to hear it with another sound. Let's check out another sound, this one here. Oh, what else do we have? What's about this? Yeah, that's fine for the moment. Maybe we bring down the velocity to something like 30. Okay, that's a wonderful beat. I want to listen to this beat now for four bars. So we want to create a loop. First, we zoom out until we see bar one to bar five, because that's exactly one, two, three, four bars. We make the loop for four bars. So we do it like this and now we want to loop this clip. You can make this clip longer by clicking here in the right corner where you get the special mouse symbol. But now you make it empty, right? We want to copy the one bar we have and to do this we make a loop. So if you go down with the mouse you get another symbol and now you make a loop of it. So now you could listen to the beat for four bars. But we want to change something at the last bar. Normally you make something like a break at the end of 8 bars or at the eight, end of 16 bars. But uh, in our little example we do it now at the end of 4 bars to be a little bit faster. So to make the last bar a special bar, a separate bar, we click here exactly on the line of 4, bar 4. And now we move the mouse to uh, 5 and up to the pattern, to our clip. And to separate it, we use the command split that you get with the right mouse key or with command E or control E. Now we have here the last bar. The first thing we do is we erase the kick 2, 3 and 4. So this is number 1. We keep number one, two, three, and four. And also the snare on two and four. Let's listen from bar three. That's a break. And what do we have normally at the end of a break? Means at the beginning of the next bar, in this case our first bar, a crash. So how do we add a crash? Let's add another track by clicking this plus symbol here. Uh, we want to load a sample now, so we go from devices, this time to samples. Uh, we type in the search field crash, like this. And here we have the crash EDM. Let's take this. And what we did now is we created a new track, so we have three tracks now. Uh, the audio track we don't need at the moment, so let's select it and use the backspace key to erase it. And on our new track, if you make a double click, you see that we loaded a sampler and in the sampler is loaded our sample, our crash. Okay, to play a note for this crash, we create again a, an empty clip at the beginning of the first bar by making a double click here. We make a double click on our empty clip and let's add a note at C3 and make it one bar long by clicking in the right corner and moving it to bar number two. And now let's listen from bar three. Maybe that's a little bit too loud. Let's go down here from minus 10 to minus 20. If your beat sounds like this right now, 
I say congratulations. You made already your first beat in Bitwig Studio 3 and as you know, the greatest hits on this planet started with a beat. If you have any questions to this tutorial, just write me in the comments of this video and I would be happy if you also write me how you liked this tutorial. Please subscribe my channel to not miss any episode of this tutorial series. At this point I say thank you for watching, always stay creative, cheers! My name is Thomas Foster and this is my YouTube or Facebook channel Thomas Foster Music Production, which is all about music production. Here you will find tutorials on the most important DAWs or music programs, the most important plugins and I'll show you how to produce the current sound of the charts and the clubs. If you have any questions about this video or more generally about music production, just write me in the comments. I'll answer all your questions. Of course, I'm also happy about a simple feedback or suggestion for another video. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my videos. At this point, I say thank you for being there. Always stay creative. Cheers!